let me now turn uh, to Theo. Thank you very much for coming over from Seoul and give us the perspective of trade. You have been very much engaged in global trade negotiations, uh, both on an incentive perspective, also on a protecting perspective. Um, you have been, as I said, uh, the Minister uh, for Trade in Korea, and you have a very interesting perspective on the future trade regimes. So please, over to you. Well, thank you, Nikolaus. Uh, actually, I'm the only one who doesn't know much about business, <laughs> uh, even though I'm advising our clients about the geopolitics, you know, and some legislation introduced by the United States and EU, but I'm not really in the you know, area of business. So bear that in mind. Uh, uh, this, this afternoon, I want to share some of my thoughts uh, on the um, evolving landscape uh, of the world uh, trade environment. And uh, as we all know very well, we all talk about this in, uh, in the first session and second session, the global trade environment has been undergoing unprecedented uh, transformation. And as a trade economist, uh, I believe the most fundamental change is the increasing prevalence of negative views toward uh, globalization and free trade among the general public. There is a widespread perception uh, in many countries that domestic industries and laborers have suffered from uh, domestic companies' overseas investment and excessive imports from uh, abroad, uh, since they think that, that these have uh, caused a uh, huge unemployment rate and also growing income uh, inequality. Unfortunately, uh, politicians uh, have strategically promoted this negative sentiment on globalization and free trade to capitalize on the psychological state of low income voters, uh, predominantly uh, composed of workers, for their advantages in the election. Indeed, uh, this has led to protectionist policies in many countries that prioritize domestic production over corporate overseas investment and imports from a uh, uh, foreign country. Another critical impact, uh, uh, another critical aspect impacting the world trade environment, we all talk about this, is the strategic competition between the US and China. Following the imposition of extra tariffs on imports uh, from China by former President Trump, US-China uh, disputes have uh, broadened the scope of national security to include economic and technology areas. The US considers steel and aluminum even crucial element in its national security and is actively engaging in securing its dominant uh, position in strategically advanced technology sectors such as semiconductor, electric vehicles, EV batteries and AI and so on. In addition, the global companies, uh, we all talk about this uh, now, have experienced real challenges uh, stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic and the war between Russia and Ukraine, and they recognize the imperative need to restructure their uh, supply chain. At the same time, uh, major countries are actively promoting initiatives related to various social and environmental objectives, including uh, enhancing labor, and human rights, and uh, reducing carbon emission, and uh, protecting the environment. Let me now provide some uh, examples of major countries' policy measures. The US has introduced the uh, Chips and Science Act, uh, along allocating $52 billion in subsidies to the semiconductor sector. The EU has also introduced the EU Chips Act, which uh, provides substantial amount of subsidies to increase the global market share of its semiconductor. It is crucial to notice that countries previously critical of China for providing heavy government subsidies to specific sectors now give themselves industrial subsidies to promote their domestic uh, industries. Of course, China continues to provide government subsidies to key advanced technology sectors. This means that uh, industrial policies may be uh, revived triggering unfair trade activities among major countries. The U.S. restricts exports of semiconductor and semiconductor equipment to China, which is you know, hugely affecting the Korean companies, which are operating in China. Samsung and SK Hynix are, are producing semiconductor in China. 
The U.S. also introduced, uh, we, we, in Korea we call IRA, but now it's like IRA, uh, IRA uh, which is Infl Inflation Reduction Act, which include provisions, of, uh, uh, provisions discriminating uh, against uh, electric vehicles assembled outside North America. And uh, EVs equipped with batteries manufactured with parts or minerals from the so-called foreign countries of concern, which may include uh, China. At the same time, uh, leading nations worldwide have advocated uh, for policies to establish stable supply chain, particularly for critical raw materials. For example, the United States is uh, endeavoring to establish a critical minerals club with the EU through the uh, Trade and Technology Council, another club uh, with the uh, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework uh, member states. Also, EU uh, has introduced Critical Raw Material Act to limit its dependence on a single country for critical raw material to a maximum of 65%. As we can see, major countries are utilizing subsidies, trade and investment measures to achieve uh, their national objectives in various areas, including national security, the economy, technology, society, and more. However, some of these measures may violate the multilateral trade norms of the WTO, such as the subsidies agreement and the principles of most favored nation and national treatment. Certain measures included in the US IRA are a good examples of these violations. Nonetheless, the world trade governance, particularly the multilateral trading system of the WTO, is not effectively addressing these issues. As we all know, WTO dispute settlement system remains incomplete because there's no judges at the appellate body since the end of 2019, and appointing the appellate body judges has been unsuccessful. So even if a WTO member wins a dispute, through the panel investigation, the final legal result will be pending until the appellate body, which currently has no judges, uh, can make a ruling. Therefore, it would be meaningless to accuse any members for their violation of the WTO norms and principles for the time being. So we now find ourselves in a world where major nations are adopting various unilateral actions focusing on their domestic political agenda to achieve economic as well as non-economic uh, objectives. The negative consequences of these unilateral actions on the world trade will progressively escalate. If this trend uh, continues, world trade order will remain uh, fragmented, increasing uncertainty in the global trade environment. Under these circumstances, it will be practically impossible for the whole WTO members to discuss sensitive issues. However, doing nothing would not be a, a desirable option either. So we should note that the WTO, member, uh, WTO allows member states to take unilateral actions if fair and non-discriminatory implement, implementation of these actions is guaranteed. Considering all this, it would be crucial for countries with similar interests and positions to engage in uh, transparent and unbiased discussions on uh, various issues, including new commercial uh, rules, uh, and come up with uh, uh, agreements. Of course, these agreements should be open to non-participating countries that may wish to see it later. Many trade experts uh, consider uh, these so-called open plurilateral agreements as the second best option for addressing important issues at the WTO. So in conclusion, I would like to note that serious efforts from major uh, uh, trading nations are urgently needed to respond to this uh, crisis situation uh, in the world trade environment and mitigate uncertainties in the global trade environment. Thank you very much. This is all. Thank you, Taiwo. And I think it's, it's real that we, as you said, you speak about the crisis environment. I think the fact that WTO is not active anymore, creates a vacuum, which we also see obviously in a kind of a multipolar world where mm -hmm. I think the clear institutions that used to steer that global economy are, have been massively weakened. Yeah. Yes. So let me